everybody, it's Tom with Protection Dogs Elite. And I want to talk to you about playing with a ball on a string with your protection dog. There's a lot of great benefits of doing this. Um, one is, is you can burn off a lot of energy on your dog. So the dog is not so crazy in the house all the time. So you can play tug with them. They love that. Uh, also, it makes the dog want to be with you more because it's fun for them to play with this with you involved. So it makes them more engaged with you. It's also good for their health, keeps their heart rate, keeps their heart clean, uh, gives them exercise. And you too, actually, because uh, uh, when you got a tough dog, uh, they'll pull like crazy on this thing. But uh, I gotta tell you from experience, when I had my first protection dog, there's uh, perils involved with this that you must know about before you get crazy with one of these. Uh, first thing is the reason it's on a string is because if you hold the ball and tease the dog, you're taking a dog that can bite with 600 pounds of pressure and heading them towards your hand. This can ruin your whole day, I can tell you that. So that's why it's on a string. So the dog can hit the Kong, or the, this happens to be a Kong brand. I happen to like this one because it floats. My dog loves the water. So he's not so much in diving to the bottom of the pool, but he loves to chase this in the water. So this one floats. Um, so some of the things that can go wrong. Well, first of all, um, you must pay attention to the dog at all times, no exception, because you're out here with this thing that's driving this dog crazy that wants to bite this, and somebody calls you for dinner and you're not paying attention. Well, I, I, I won't show you now because it's it's cleared up, but I got nailed so hard, so many times, bruised, bitten in, in here, not because the dog was trying to bite me, because I'm going like this and the dog can't get a target, see? So pay attention to the dog every second when you're playing with one of these things. Also, uh, if things get crazy, don't pull the ball in towards you. <laughs> this is, here's the reaction, especially if you just pull it in at this level and, the, and you've got a 70 pound dog to 100 pound dog, here's the reaction. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, this is, I'm Michael Jackson all <laughs> over. Don't do that. If you get anything crazy with your, with your dog, drop the ball and let the, the dog will definitely go for the ball and stay away from you. All right, so be very careful with that. And also don't, uh, especially in the beginning, don't be going like this and having the dog trying to hit the ball because it's gonna hit your arm or your hand and you're gonna be sorry about it. Now, when you get more advanced, you can make the dog miss to build up their drive and their frustration that they really want to get it. But the thing is, don't do that when you're first starting because again, you might get it right in front of you and the dog nails you in the leg or uh, you know, you're up here like this and they nail you in the face. I mean, and it's not that they're aggressive to you. They're trying to get the ball, all right? So um, anything else you can think of I missed there? Because uh, we're going to switch over to a professional trainer and we're gonna bring out a $65,000 killer dog. It's uh, his name is Fredo. He's 90, what is he, 90 pounds? 95. Uh, 95 pounds of solid muscle and he will tear you up, all right? But he loves to play with the ball. So I'm gonna let our professional trainer show you how to do this and then I'll come back later to recap. Okay, here we are with Stefan and Fredo. Fredo is one kick-ass dog. Uh, and you'll notice that Stefan, who is a world-class, what they call decoy, uh, has leather gloves on. Now he doesn't need those, uh, but you might want to wear leather gloves to start with when you're doing this, because um, even if the dog accidentally hits you, the tooth won't puncture you. So that's a good thing. And also, when you're tugging with the dog, the string, uh, they really can pull really hard, uh, so it, it helps you hold on to the string a little better. So I highly suggest leather gloves. So, Stefan, take it away with Fredo and show him a little bit about how you play with ball on a string. Right. See how he's holding it away from his body. 
Yeah, there we go. Now he's tugging with it. You can see he's crushing the cone right here. <laughs> he's, he's, he's so tough, he's crushing the cone. <laughs> yeah, they love to play like that. It's good for them exercise. Look at him. Look out. Look at that. Uh, there we go. See, and the dog wants to bring it back to you. When you really know you have a good bond, that's something I didn't talk about earlier. It really helps create a bond with the dog. See how the dog came back to him and wants to play some more. See, some dogs will take things and just uh, run away with them. But in this case, that dog wants to play with his uh, master. And uh, look at him, he is tough. <laughs> I can tell you those ropes hurt too if, uh, if, uh, without gloves. Now he's making a miss. Now this is something that's more advanced because you don't want to accidentally have that dog running towards your legs or hitting you. I mean, I got bruises on my knees where the dog actually knocked me down. So what are some of the other ways you play with the dog with the Kong? And you can throw it for him too once you get it loose. Done. Great exercise. The dogs love it. Look how he brought it right back. He wants to play some more. Also, you can use it as uh, like when you're training healing and things like the yeah. as a reward, right? Can you yeah. show him that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Sit. Done. So this is going to be for a little bit more advanced. This so is more advanced. Yeah. Put it in the, your arms. This is how we started the foundation to have a healing and a focus from the dog. Good. Good. The dog knows the ball is going to come from. Yeah, the, arm the dog feet. knows that the ball is going to come from that direction. That keeps him right where you want it. See? There we go. Okay, so you can see this is a great exercise. The dogs love it. Your bond will increase. Uh, you'll burn up energy on the dog. Uh, you can do some of this inside if you have space enough, but uh, it's a lot of fun to throw, throw it, let them run around outside. So, uh, and notice no injuries, no handlers were damaged during this exercise. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's a, another game you can play. Uh, we're putting a Fredo in a down, and then Stefan is going to hide the ball, and Fredo is going to have to go find it, and he just loves that. So go ahead, you can hide it when you're ready. Um, he's going to search for the ball, which burns up a lot of energy, is a lot of fun for the dog, and uh, you don't have to <laughs> worry about getting nailed. Here he comes. <laughs> See, that's where you gotta watch all the time. He almost hit the Stefan in the back of the legs. Yeah, he wants that ball. He's gonna, oh, he found it already. <laughs> there you go. Good boy. And of course, he wants to bring it right back to his, uh, his handler. Okay, here's one more game you can play with the dog, where you put the dog in a stay. Go ahead, uh, Stefan. And then the, uh, the dog is going to just run like crazy to you to grab the ball. But you got to make sure you're in no way behind that ball when this happens. So Stefan's going to show you how to hold the ball. There we go. Here we go. Boom! That dog would hurt just by running into you, not even counting biting you. So, uh, so there we go. Good boy, Fredo. You did a good job. So anyway, that's how, uh, folks, that's how you play with the ball on a string without getting yourself nailed. You're building a bond. You're getting the dog in shape. You're burning off energy. Uh, there's all kinds of great things come from it. So uh, wave goodbye, Fredo. Wave goodbye, Stefan. All right.